The Toyota Tacoma is not the best option for long distance traveling. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty good here, and that's right. And I know I'm going to take a lot of a lot of heat for this, but I got to say, the Toyota Tacoma is not the best option for long distance traveling. You know, I'm out this morning taking a little road trip in the Tacoma, about a 40 minute trip or something like that, and I got to thinking. You know, I've taken a couple of long distance trips in my trucks recently. You know, I drove the. Toyota Tundra from Ohio to Texas and back and I also drove the uh, Jeep Gladiator from South Texas to middle Colorado and back and I've got some good seat time I guess in those trucks driving around so I can't help but compare the Toyota Tacoma in little trips like this to those trucks and I gotta say first of all the most comfortable, and it's real close, was probably the Toyota Tundra. You no know, big giant truck, nice and heavy, lots of power, uh, no issues with that whatsoever. And by the way, it was the V8 Crew Max that I made that trip in, not my V6 uh, double cab. Also, the Jeep Gladiator, like I said, I took that from South Texas to Colorado. Uh, plenty of power, plenty of space inside. No issues, fingers crossed there. Uh, nice and comfortable, and it was uh, it was a blast to drive. Loved it. So let's uh, let's talk about the Toyota Tacoma. You know, and part of this is because of the setup that I have. So it's not exactly fair from that standpoint. My truck is lifted. It does have bigger wheels and tires on it, which provides for a bit of a harsher ride. Um, so it's not going to be exactly the same as if it were just stock, riding on stock, stock suspension or stock setup with the stock wheels and tires. But even so, there are other reasons that I don't think the Toyota Tacoma is the best long distance option. First of all, it's size on the inside. You know, when you have somebody else sitting there beside you and maybe somebody else in the back seat, it's not going to be the most comfortable trip. First of all, the people in the back, they're going to be complaining that they don't have enough room. And the seating position is not great. It sits more straight up and down. It doesn't allow you to recline at all. And just becomes a bit uncomfortable after a while. Now, I know this because I've spent a little bit of time in the back seat riding around. It's been a while, but nothing has changed. The third generation setup is the same as it was when I rode in the back. I wouldn't want to do a long distance trip, and I'm talking about hours, you know, like 8, 10, 12, 18, whatever hours, riding in the back seat of this truck. It's just not comfortable. There's not a lot of leg room. Your knees are almost, if not, depending on how tall you are, right up against the front seats. Just not a comfortable way to uh, experience a long distance trip. And if you have kids, older kids, let's say maybe early teens, you know, where they're just starting to look you in the eye, they're gonna be pretty uh, cramped back there in the back as well. As far as power goes, you know, it's adequate, uh, but certainly not over the top. You know, when I'm out driving on the open road, especially if you get into some of these routes where you're on country roads, and invariably you get behind slower drivers that of course you wanna go around because you want to get to where you're going, right? On an eight, 10 hour trip, after the first uh, couple, three hours, you've, you've probably had about enough and you're about ready to get there. So you don't want to spend any more time than you have to riding behind slow drivers. So you need to have the get up and go, the power to get around those folks. And you know, some of those roads, I experienced this on my trip to Colorado, um, are pretty narrow and pretty tight. So you want to get around people as quick as you can so that you can avoid anything that might be coming at you, right? A lot of semis drive those roads, strangely enough. Uh, and I think the Tacoma is just a bit underpowered for that. You know, after taking the Tundra and the Jeep Gladiator, both 
have awesome power, I think. They enable you to stop on the gas and get around those folks when you need to. And I like to be able to do that. Getting on exit or entrance ramps, rather. You know, when you're out there in the wild, you got to get up to speed and into traffic as soon as you can because people are moving. So it becomes a little bit of a safety issue too, strangely enough. Now, visibility, you know, it's not bad in the Tacoma. Granted, I have a bed rack back there, so I'm not really talking about having that. Without the bed rack back there, it's not bad. But again, when you're out there driving around, you want to be able to see because you're going to be passing people, right? And you, of course, need to make sure that you're clear. Check that blind spot. There's just a little bit more confining feel in the Toyota Tacoma, not just in the the cab, but when you're looking around trying to see what's around you, uh, it's just a little bit more confining, a little bit more difficult to see, even driving around now on a slower speed limit like I am right now. So it's just not as comfortable, I guess. Um, the seats in the Tacoma for the driver, I mean, let's be honest, who's the most important person in the truck? You know, the, the, the driver, right? But anyway, they just... They, they start to bother you after a little while, even on a 40 minute trip, you know? They start to feel a little bit hard. They just don't have enough padding in them, I guess. Or maybe I don't have enough padding, I don't know. But I didn't experience that in either the uh, Tundra or strangely enough, the Jeep Gladiator. You know, and looking at the seats and, and you think, well, you know, they're probably not gonna be that comfortable. They really were, I never experienced, and I sat in those seats for a long time. I mean, it was uh, I think it was 19 hours one way. Granted, we did stop here and there. It's not like I sat in that seat for 19 hours straight and a pit crew came around and fueled up my vehicle. But even so, I never, uh, I never really felt uncomfortable in those seats. So kudos to, to Jeep or Fiat Chrysler, I guess, for putting some comfy seats in the Gladiator. Um, fuel economy wise, you know, I don't know. It's probably closer to the Toyota Tundra than the Jeep Gladiator. Uh, <laughs> it is more thirsty in my truck. You know, I was averaging 20 some miles per gallon in the, uh, in the Jeep Gladiator. Of course, the Tundra was horrible. We won't even talk about that. But I will say the Toyota Tacoma is closer to the Tundra as far as fuel economy goes than it is to the Jeep Gladiator. So if that's a concern and you're looking to do the trip for as uh, little as possible when it comes to cost, um, definitely the Jeep Gladiator in my experience was uh, was better on, uh, on gas than the Toyota Tacoma was, which you know is kind of strange. You think they would be fairly similar, but, and they're only about 400 pounds or so different in weights. So it's really just the way they're set up, I think. Uh, so yeah, I uh, I wouldn't recommend it for long distance driving. I don't think it's the best option out there. You know, for kicking around town and stuff as a daily driver, that kind of thing where you're, you know, only in it for half an hour or something like that, maybe less one way. It's perfect for that. Um, really equal across the board as far as I'm concerned there. But for long distance driving, I think it's probably not the most comfortable option out there. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you've spent uh, hours and hours in your Toyota Tacoma, do you agree with me? As compared to other options, other truck options out there, I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, if you haven't before and you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.